Okay, now when I start painting, I almost all, well, I, not almost, I always start with a toned ground. One, I like, the, I like the feeling of painting on a wet canvas. It helps me to fuss with edges better. I can soften edges much easier. The paint's easier to work. Uh, I also like to have something besides white. If I start painting on a white canvas, say I'm laying a light yellow down, that light yellow is going to be darker than the white, so it's not going to communicate light. If I start with a kind of a medium tone on my canvas, then if I put a light color on it, I can actually see it as a light color because it's lighter than the tone. Now, I do the same thing with my palette. I use a, I use a gray palette. It's a nice mid-tone, and if you look at my palette, you can see the white looks white. The yellow is lighter than my, than, than my palette. So if I'm mixing, a, I have a mid-tone gray, so if I'm mixing a lighter color than that, I can see that it's lighter on my palette. If I'm mixing a darker color, I can see that it's darker because it's darker than that mid-tone on my palette. It's just one more trick that helps me to see value. And value is the foundation of all of your paintings. The value, if you're, when you're landscape painting, value is how you communicate depth. Things standing upright in the foreground tend to be your darkest value. Things standing in the background tend to be a little lighter than that. And as things go back, as you make things go back, they get lighter and lighter and lighter. Then generally the ground, the horizontal areas, are a little lighter than that. And the sky usually is the lightest of the values. Now there's a lot of exceptions to this, but I would say do a few hundred of these little studies before you start playing with, with, with variations and trying to go your own way. Make sure you have the scales really well learned before you try to play, before you try to play jazz. I, when I, on my palette, I mix two, what I call the muds, and they're just a way to neutralize color. So, okay, so with my, my this, this is, I'm mixing up kind of a raw sienna. If it's easier for you, and it takes a lot less time, you can act, you just go get a tube of raw sienna and it'll work just about as good. Now I, I take that, I put a lot of, a lot of uh, paint medium in that, and then I just smear it on my canvas. Now that has, that's way too much pigment, it's way too dark, so what I'm gonna do now, so what I'm gonna do now is uh, take a paper towel, and wipe this down good. I, I want my I want my uh, canvas to be a little wet, but I don't want it to be soaking wet. I also don't want it to be really colorful. I want to get you know I want to get most of this color off of it. So so there we go. Okay, then I fold my paper towel and I divide the canvas into thirds vertically. And these don't have to be right on. There's you know this is just. These are these need to be close. So there's my. I guess I didn't get this one quite. Okay. Well, anyway, I I don't know if you can see it on the camera, but I can see it. So this divides my canvas into thirds. What what this does is gives me my four sweet spots. My whatever I'm doing, my center of interest will probably be on one of those spots.